guys welcome back to my channel and um, I'm on my way back to Long Island I'm going to spend some days with um with Jill and my grandchildren I'm so excited about it anytime I get to be blessed with time with my family is a wonderful thing um, so anyway I went by the post office and picked up some packages thank you so much for your wonderful gifts I haven't opened them yet but when I get back home, I will show y'all what I received. But it's, um, they're from Amazon Pantry, so I'm pretty sure it's some more food. Chef stable food. So thank you for sending that to me. But I know that you receive a blessing in your heart for giving to me. And I do appreciate it so much. But as my, um... My mother's new husband, whenever she got remarried after Daddy died, his name was Mr. Neal. He called himself Mitt or Neal. <laughs> Mitt or. And every time we would eat, I'd say, Mitt or Neal, do you want a second help? And he'd say, no, I had a plenty. So, y'all, I have a plenty food. <laughs> so, if you want to still receive the blessing, um... Just, you know, go ahead and, and give that food to um, to someone in your community. Or maybe you could chat with Meals on Wheels. And, you know, they stuff, um, when I was volunteering there during the summer, they, um, they make bags, you know, brown paper bags every day for seniors. And uh, it's for seniors who, when I was growing up, we called them shut-ins. But, uh, you know, they're homebound. And they put, you know, little... Um, you know, those granola bars and things like that in, in the brown bags and um, little juice boxes and things like that. So, uh, instead of giving to me, please just um, just go ahead and, and share your blessings and your love with uh, your community. Thank you. Uh, let me see. I got to get on this Garden State Parkway. <laughs> Pay my way to Long Island. Cost about fifty dollars to go. Uh, Jill, I have the transponder, so Jill gets a bill for that every month, and uh, it's deducted from her checking account. So she does afford me the um, the expense of driving to to visit her and the children, and I pay her back in return. I I do babysitting. <laughs> so if she and Husani want to go somewhere or or go on vacation or whatever. Either they'll pay for me to go with them or I'll stay home with the children. Uh, it has been more difficult staying home with them now that, you know, the baby is here. It's it's a little more difficult for, for grandma to handle two children. But anyway, um, I was telling y'all, um, you know, about Daddy when he died and had that massive heart attack there on the kitchen floor. Of course, Mama went ran over there and started pounding on his chest and everything and doing what what she knew best to do as far as CPR to, to try to help him. And <laughs> Poor thing. She worked so hard and tried to save Daddy's life, but um, it was just such a massive heart attack. She was unable to save him. But, you know, I told y'all that Daddy didn't have any life insurance. So, um, you know, Mother was left with um, just a little bit of Social Security pension from Daddy's work. Um, you know, he never saved a dime, and uh, he never paid off the house either. Daddy would just pay, in December, it was, um, I guess it was an FHA loan, and they were very lenient and forgiving with their payments. So, um... In December, Daddy would just pay the interest on the house, a thousand dollars a year. And that's all he ever paid. Oh Lord, y'all, he was so stingy and tight with money. I reckon that's why I'm so. I'm just the opposite with money. I would give somebody my last dollar if I thought that they needed it more than I did. <laughs> but that's the way us good old Southern Baptists are, you know. We um, we love everybody and and we do try to help everybody, and I'm proud of that. Um, my brother-in-law's brother, he, he went to college, and he became a pharmacist, and 
his wife was well educated. She, I believe, she was a school teacher, and um, they owned a pharmacy there in, in um, Mount Olive, Mississippi, and you know worked the pharmacy and and put their two daughters through college. And one of their daughters is a urologist. So um, after he retired and sold the pharmacy, um, he and his wife signed up with the Southern Baptist Convention and their missionary program. And uh, to this day, they still go to Honduras and um, help the people there in Honduras who are in need. You know, bringing them fresh food and water and, and building schools and, and churches for them. So that makes me proud that I have a missionary in my family. And um, y'all know I'm still a member of Olive Baptist Church, which, which is a Southern Baptist church in um, Pensacola, Florida. Well. Reverend Trailer, he's been there for years and years. In fact, um, when I was saved in 2003, uh, he baptized me there in the baptismal at the church, and that was one of the happiest days of my life, y'all. Um, of course, you know, I showed y'all that little, uh, I think it was called Parsons Creek down there, past Secret Grove Church, where I was baptized when I was about 10 or 11 years old, but I was so young and dumb, I didn't even know really what, you know, getting saved was all about. And um, so after all those years and all the things that I did and didn't do in my life that I felt guilty and, and ashamed of, I decided, well, I think it's time for me to, to turn my life over to Christ and to really mean it this time. So, um, so I was 50 years old, you know, when I was, was baptized again almost 50. So I'm proud of that. But another thing I'm proud of is just Olive Baptist Church. It, you know, it had the Dress for Success program, and I'm sure they probably still do. And, you know, I didn't even have a dress when I was living in the recovery home. Um, and I sure didn't want to wear jeans to church. So I went in there, and, um, you know, they fixed me up real nice with a dress and jewelry and a purse and everything. So um, I am real proud of my church. I may just stay a member there. I don't. I don't think it really matters. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the Olive Baptist has a program, uh, an outreach program for the young uh, generation. And you know, with all the concrete there and the huge parking lot and everything, they let the kids, the teenagers, come with their skateboards. So we had a skateboard ministry. And I remember Reverend Trailer, um, you know, after the, the boys would, well, there might have been some girls there too, but it was mostly teenage boys. And um, so I remember Reverend Trailer uh, talking about it one day at, in church, and he said that um, some of the boys looked like they fell into a tackle box. <laughs> You know, they had all these metal piercings in their nose and everything, but that didn't matter to any of us. We were glad to see them come to church. So, um, if any of y'all ever go down to Pensacola, I hope that I get to go back someday. I really do miss my church family. But uh, y'all go into Olive Baptist and tell them that you met a, a Southern girl on YouTube named Glenda Merlin that he babs baptized her about. 20 years ago. <laughs> so I'm just going to be telling y'all some more stories, and you just keep on coming back. Bye, guys.